Hello everyone, Lewis Crompton here and this is not financial advice. Property mentors will tell you to leverage to the max and to only pay interest on your mortgages. Here is why they are wrong. If you want to learn about how to do money better, how to make more of it in less time, then like this video and subscribe to the channel. Now, like all forms of investing, property is not a one-size-fits-all model. I swear sometimes people forget the past as well, and they just throw around all these old cliche statistics and numbers that don't necessarily have any relevance today. They don't have relevance to what is happening now. They don't have relevance to you or to your personal individual situation. And we have to look into your situation to really identify what makes sense for you. One of the major things that property gurus often do is that they tell you that you should be paying interest only on your mortgages. So why do they tell you to do this? It all comes down to leverage, leveraging your money to make more money. And often I'm a big fan of leverage. It's what makes it work for us. Now, in principle, it makes total sense. And I bought into this process when I first started in property too. What you do is you purchase a property. Now, for the sake of maths and for my ability or lack thereof to do mental arithmetic, let's say that the property you are buying costs you £100,000, including all fees, etc., etc., just keeping it simple. So our costs all in are £100,000. If we were to put that onto a mortgage, if you are buying a limited company like I do, then you would have to put down most likely a 25% deposit. If this was a commercial unit rather than a buy to let, then you may have been looking at between 40% and 6% crazy money for a deposit. And people still think you can invest in property with zero money. The money has to come from somewhere, people, even if it isn't coming from your pocket. It has to come from somewhere. Now, with our £100,000 property, the deposit then at 25% works out to an amount of about £25,000. Now, this is very standard when buying in a limited company. Yes, sometimes you can get mortgages for lower deposit amounts, even as a limited company, but you tend to pay a price somewhere, uh, maybe a higher arrangement fee. Now, when you do that, you may be looking at a mortgage payment of, say, £200 per month, depending on the mortgage interest rate that the lender gives you. 3.5% is typical with properties held in a limited company at that value. A typical rent amount for this value property would be somewhere around the £600 mark, again, depending on the area, which means our cash flow before any other expenses, £400 for this buy to let. Not bad, right? Happy to make an extra £400 a month? You probably are. However, there are other costs and there is tax. So that £400 probably looks closer, if not less than £300. Now, all of those calculations are based on an interest-only mortgage. An interest-only mortgage is where, for the term of the mortgage, you only pay off interest. So in 20 years or 25 or 30 years, depending on what you agree as a mortgage term, you would still have the full £75,000 left to pay off. How did I get to that £75,000? Well, the purchase price was 100000 the deposit amount, 25,000. So the amount on the mortgage is the total value, 100,000, minus the deposit of 25,000, leaving us with 75,000 pounds. When we pay interest only, we never touch the loan repayment. It's always sat there in the background. The first question is, are you happy to get to the end of a 30 year term mortgage and still have 75,000 pounds left to pay off? Maybe you are. Maybe you think you'll just remortgage it. I think sometimes people forget that debt is still debt. Now, these calculations are also based on the interest rates never, ever changing. You may have a fixed term on that mortgage rate of, say, two years or five years. That is probably the best way to go. But what happens when that mortgage term ends? And I just mean the agreement of the, the set fee, the set rate. The easy answer from the property guru is to simply put it on another mortgage. Oh, because it is that simple, right? No, it isn't. When you change mortgage companies, you'll most likely have to go through the entire mortgage process again. Documents, viewings, valuations, surveys, all of it, which all costs money, which, by the way, is going to eat into whatever percentage saving you're going to make by changing the percentage variable. On a mortgage this size, the difference in percentage can mean tens of pounds rather than thousands of pounds, but it's still a factor. And it becomes a false economy to move it over, which means you get trapped. 
Now I'm trapped in one of my properties. Great little earner, but every month I get a letter through the post, old school, from my broker telling me the interest rate has gone up. It's currently sat just below 8%. Criminal. Big shout out here to Together Mortgages, who are the worst and least compassionate lending agency I have personally ever worked with. And I won't ever work with them again. Full stop, never will do. They even denied COVID was a factor in causing delays to property deals and projects so that they could charge an extortionate surcharge. So I won't use the word I would like to use to describe them because I might get penalized by YouTube if I do. So I'm not going to do that. So that is why my plan is to start paying off that mortgage. I'm actually probably going to pay it off in full. Now, by paying off that mortgage, I'm, I'm tying up money. Yes, I get that. But it saved me 8%. People forget the time that mortgage rates shot up to 15%. People lost their homes as a result of it because they couldn't afford the repayments. People forget that you are not the one in control of the rates the mortgage company charges. People forget that you have to be approved to change the mortgages or get mortgages in the first place. Anyone in property will tell you it's so much harder to get approved for mortgages now. Over the past couple of years, I have been transferring my mortgages over to capital repayment structures or just paying them off in total. People literally told me I was stupid, that I was mad, and it goes directly against what the gurus are teaching people. When will people wake up and realize you have to invest in a way that suits you, that also brings you peace and joy? Don't get me wrong. The creation of these income streams can be very, very stressful, and some stress is worth it. I don't want to set my um, life up my investments up in stress I know property investors who had their entire portfolio wiped out because they were over leveraged paying interest only and things went wrong the most dangerous thing that you can do as an investor is to operate without the right knowledge and to be overly leveraged as a result I personally would rather take a lower income from my property portfolio for the next 20 30 years and in 20 years time, own that entire portfolio in cash. What does that mean for my financial stability and security? It means I become truly free. Guess what zero mortgages means? It means true freedom. It means the government can't change the rules on lending on me. It means the brokers and the lenders can't control me or mess things up for me. It also means that my cash flow is way higher. It also means I have greater security and greater stability from a financial perspective. I like the sound of that rather than a few extra pennies each month in my bank account. I know the statistic that it's uh, always quoted by the gurus about how house prices double in value every 10 years or so. Do they? But I'm going to call that one out now too. It just isn't true. It's not true across the board. It's actually not the commonplace thing that happens either. Most places up north, that just is not the case. Yes, it is true in some select places, but not in all places. Another reason why I believe paying capital and interest is a good idea is because the more capital you pay, the lower your interest payment becomes as well as a cash value. There are a couple of options that you can use to do this. Now, listen to this carefully because it could sound like I'm about to contradict myself here, but I'm not, I promise you. So just hear me out until the end. I'm not contradicting myself. Now, if you are a lazy investor like me, and I don't mean lazy in its traditional sense, I mean you like things to be automatic and you not have to think about things too much on a day-to-day, week-to-week or month-to-month basis, then I would be looking at setting up cash repayments at the point I get the mortgage in place straight away from day one. That way it is happening each month and I'm a big believer in de-risking everything you do and if you are like me at all, you like the idea of buying back a little of your risk each and every single month. Every month that passes now, I have little and lower risk than I had the month before and I really, really like that. The other option that you have, uh, which requires more thinking, more planning and more discipline and self-control, maybe you have it, maybe you don't, would be to follow the same process, but manually. So the way that you would do that is when you set up the mortgage, have it set up as interest only, but save in a different account the capital repayment amount. The reason this may suit you is if your sole income is property and you need flexibility for rainy days, etc., etc. This way, if you have spare cash left over, you can pay off lumps of capital. So that may be a good option there. But be careful. When you do this, some mortgage lenders have penalties in place for people who um, 
over pay um, to certain amounts each year. So I'll only let you pay up to a certain percentage each year. So make sure you don't get stung by those pesky and greedy lending companies like I have been in the past. Now, I really want to hear from you on this one. So drop your reactions and your comments into the comment sections of this video. And if you want to learn more about how to do money better, how to make more of it in less time, then like this video and subscribe to the channel. Now make sure you share this one with somebody you think it might challenge or you think it might inspire um, and subscribe to the channel to get more of this type of content. My name is Lewis and this is not financial advice.